Park Chan-wook is considered to be one of the greatest filmmakers in Korea and the one who opened the eyes for many Westerners when it comes to Korean filmmaking. In this video, we're going to highlight what could be considered some of his trademark moves when it comes to writing and directing. Some can be seen throughout almost all of his movies, while some are mere inspirations from a filmmaker that Park Chan-wook holds dear. Let's start off with breaking the rules. Park Chan-wook has often talked about what inspired him to become a filmmaker. The movie Vertigo from 1958 by Alfred Hitchcock. And if we are going to pick out something special that can be seen in some of Park's work that mirrors Hitchcock's, it would be breaking the rules. Movies have a clear set of rules that you just don't break. Stay with the protagonist and stay true to the genre, for example. But Hitchcock wasn't afraid to break these rules, and neither is Park. Just like in Psycho, Park chan Book changes the main character halfway into the movie Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, a trick which can also be seen in Park's short film Paranmanjang. Instead, focus shifts from the protagonist to the ones that have suffered because of the protagonist's choices throughout the movie. In Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, we instead get to follow the father of the kidnapped girl, and in Paramanjang, we get to follow the family of the now dead first main character. For us, the audience, we get a greater insight into how impactful the first main character's choices really were, and the focus and the goal for the film now changes. In Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, it's not until the very end of the film that our main characters finally meet and their fates are sealed. But throughout the second half of the movie, the one we believe is our main protagonist hardly shows up on screen at all. A trick that clearly pays homage to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. But Park Chan-wook does more than just change the main character when he breaks the rules. He also changes the genre. Take Joint Security Area as an example, which start off as a thriller, turns into a war drama, and finally ends as a thriller. Park himself has said that he did this to quickly pull the audience into the story and that it stopped the true story from being too pedagogical. Solving the mystery or the thriller part isn't what's important for this movie. Instead, it's what happens in between. But there's no denying that it's effective in bringing us into the story by tricking us into thinking that this will be a mystery that we have to solve. Second, we have dream sequences. Park often uses dream sequences to visually demonstrate for the audience what the characters really feel. To enhance the feeling of losing a child, to show the burden that a character is carrying and how that burden can be shared, or to give a better understanding of the mental state of a character. But Park doesn't stop there. He also lets the other characters share, or even take part, of a dream sequence that belongs to another. As if that character now truly can feel and see what's going on with the person he or she is interacting with. This also causes us, the audience, to believe that maybe this is more than just a dream sequence. Maybe this is the reality that our characters on screen are living in. There's no better example of this than in I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. Here we get two realities, two truths, one where all characters live, patients and carers alike, and one that only the patients experience, since they all can interact with each other's madness, if you will. One person's madness becomes another person's reality. Another example of how Park uses dream sequences is by using it as a forgotten memory. In Old Boy, our protagonist chases a younger version of himself, a memory, which causes him to remember more and more. Rather than just giving us the information or creating a normal flashback, Park creates something more than that. Something more visual and inviting, almost like a puzzle unraveling in front of our character's eyes, and we get to see it unfold with them. It's more than just a dream, a memory or reality. It's what we make it out to be for ourselves, 
truth or not. Dark humor. Park often uses humor, especially dark humor, to play down some of the dark deeds that are about to come. In Park's short film Cut from The Extremes, we can see how this is done very effectively. Here, a movie director and his wife get kidnapped by an extra, and the extra threatens to cut off one of the film director's wife's fingers every five minutes, unless the director kills a girl that's also in the room. Even though this is a very serious situation, Park makes the extra perform a dance number, just so the extra can show the film director how good he really is, even though he never got the attention he thought he deserved. This dance number flips the emotion in the scene 180 degrees and breaks the tension in a very unusual and humorous way. Same can be seen in Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, when a man begs his former boss to get his job back. Once the man realizes that there's no way he'll get what he wants, he turns to self-harm, only to find out that he has misplaced his knife. By placing a more humorous part before something dark and horrible, Park downplays the seriousness and darkness of the scene. According to Park himself, he does this when he feels it's getting too heavy, because that's what life is. Anything that seems very serious and important, with a perspective change, could become something that you can laugh about. And it allows you to see life as a whole. Unhappy Endings Many of Park's movies tend to end on an unhappy note. The main character could still achieve the goal, but that doesn't mean that the end result will be a good one. They could still be left empty and hollow, as if to ask if it was really worth it. Many of Park's main characters are in a constant downward spiral, and it only ends with the death of the character. Some won't even reach the goal they aim for, while some will, but they still end up dying in the end. Old Boy is a movie that can be considered a happy ending, even though it's a tragedy. The love becomes realized, therefore a happy ending, but if you want the love to be blessed and true, well, therein lies the tragedy. In Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, all the characters achieve their final goals, but at the same time they all meet their doom. In Joint Security Area we have one sole survivor. The mystery gets solved, but he has lost everything and everyone, and is now alone and isolated, and his future uncertain. In Park's movies, the destination isn't as important as the journey itself. Just like when he breaks the genre rule in Joint Security Area, it's the middle part that's important, not the mystery, not the solution. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I missed anything, or if you would like more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. Oh, and one final thing. Scissors.